Now let's look at the DAX architecture. DAX internally has two types of caches, item cache and query cache. So these are two independent caches that are present in the DAX cluster. Item cache is the one that stores your index reads. So whenever you make a get item or batch get item request, or in other words, a read request using any of the index, then the result of that query gets stored in the item cache. The default TTL is about five minutes and you specify this when you create your DAX cluster. And when the cache becomes full, the older and less popular items will get removed. You can adjust the TTL as per your needs, but this is the amount of time any item lives in the DAX cache. Then the second cache is the query cache and as the name suggests, it stores the results of your query and scan operations. The default TTL here as well is about five minutes. And what's important to note here is that any updates that you make to the item cache or to the underlying DynamoDB table do not invalidate the query cache. So the item cache and query cache are independent of each other. So the TTL value of the query cache should be chosen accordingly. Think of it this way. Let's say you updated an item into DynamoDB and that updates your item cache, but the query cache will not be updated due to that right operation the query cache will still hold the old or the stale copy of the data. And that's why you should really keep the query cache TTL low so you do not end up reading stale data.